Okay, hi guys. So uh, we're continuing on our pentatonic series. And um, right now uh, I'm going to talk about how to deal with uh, uh, minor situations in, uh, in the second level of theory, which is the major minor key system. And what we're speaking about specifically is um, uh, secondary dominant chords and tritone substitution chords and how to deal with those in a pentatonic fashion. This way you don't have to think of all the harmonic minor scales and all this other stuff. Now, if you don't know what a tritone substitution or a secondary dominant is, go back and review uh, the major minor key system playlist because I'm not gonna review all that stuff. But uh, just to kind of wrap it up really quickly, Secondary dominants are chords, uh, dominant seventh chords, that resolve to one of the six chords of a key, and they will resolve to either a minor chord, a major chord, or another dominant seventh chord. Uh, the tricky part is really when uh, they resolve to a minor chord, because normally the harmonic minor comes in in those situations. Now, within each key, you have three instances of secondary dominant that goes to a minor chord. Um, five, seven of six, uh, five, seven of two and, uh, five, seven of three. Now, uh, what that means is in the key of G, I have the six chords of the key. This is the chord family template for guitar. So G, A minor, B minor, C, D seven and E minor. Uh, you notice you've got three minors, A minor, B minor and E minor. Now, a seventh chord can resolve to any one of those. D7 resolves to G. E7 resolves to A minor, so there's one of the minor situations. F sharp 7 resolves to B minor. G7 resolves to C. A7 resolves to D7. And B7 resolves to E minor again. All right, so now three instances of those resolutions. What I discovered is simply this, because of the blues, all right, we take a song like Georgia On My Mind, which contains the chords of G major 7, B7, E minor 7. Now, right there, we have that secondary dominant resolving to a minor chord. Then it kind of goes. All right, we'll skip that because that's all jazz territory. And then we go G major 7, E7, that's 5, 7 of 2. That's another dominant 7 resolving to a minor. And A minor, D7. All right. What I discovered is uh, when you play the G major pentatonic through this progression, first of all, B7 go on an E minor, that's 5, 7 of 6. Well, the idea would be you play an E minor pentatonic because that's what this chord is going to, E minor. Well, uh, E minor pentatonic is G major pentatonic. So if you're playing G major pentatonic in this section, you can continue on with G major pentatonic here. And what else I found was, against this E7, I don't have to go to an A minor pentatonic, even though that's what it's resolving to. I discovered that really the E minor pentatonic that we've been playing all along still works. Now, uh, there are a couple of chords in this uh, progression. The uh, C sharp minor 7 flat 5 and the C minor 7 that requires special treatment. In the pentatonic world, uh, we could do this, I guess, look at it for a moment. All right, uh, let me see. Actually, I'm going to skip this for now. If you want, I could go into a detailed analysis of the song. But right now, I'm going to, I have looped um, the first section of Georgia on my mind, which has those two secondary dominants, 5-7 of 6 and 5-7 of 2. All right. Uh, all right. So here we go. I'm going to play G major pentatonic. So... So that seems to have worked. Again, that was five, seven of six right there. It seems to have worked. That won't work for the C minor chord, but 
Again, we're not talking about that. So again, the two sections. B7 E minor, G major penitent. And then uh, skip this section. E7 A minor. That works too. So that leaves just one other instance, which happens to exist in this particular song. Um, five, seven of three, the seventh chord that resolves to B minor in the key of G. What we just looked at was the seventh chord that resolves to E minor in the key of G and the seventh chord that resolves to A minor in the key of G. No switch was necessary, okay? But um, in the case of the F sharp seven coming in, that's a tricky one <clears throat> going to the three chord. The three chord is kind of an interesting little chord. It does some weird stuff. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is, in that section, F sharp 7 resolves to B minor. Now, using standard theory, okay, well, you know, normally I do uh, B harmonic minor scale, but we want to avoid that. So what I'm going to do is use a B minor pentatonic and see if that works. So the section goes E minor to A minor over again. And again, our G major pentatonic will work just fine. Now here comes the F sharp 7. It's a little dissonant, but by the time the B minor shows up, nobody's going to have hurt ears. Um, so in the case of 5, 7 of 3, we use the pentatonic that that chord is going to. In other words, F sharp 7 is going to B minor. We use the B minor pentatonic, okay, in that uh, situation. All right, so uh, what I'm trying to convey here is um, because of the blues, these uh, more abstracted scales like the harmonic and melodic minor aren't necessarily required. Um, certainly a blues player would, would just stay with that G major pentatonic throughout, and you could kind of get away with it. I'm going to play through uh, the second section and see if it works. It's a serious cheat, but that's what pentatonic scales are. They're a serious cheat. Now, what I did there was I stayed in my G major pentatonic throughout that. All right. Um, all right. So that this is we're talking about secondary dominance and the special cases that resolve to minor chords of the key where normally you'd play a harmonic minor scale. Uh, just to truly elucidate, when uh, we have the two, the three, and the sixth chord of the key can have their uh, companion dominant seven. So uh, E7 goes to A minor. And normally, in that case, normally I do an A harmonic minor scale. All right. Uh, now we have uh, five, seven of six, B7 to E minor. Right. And normally, again, in that case, I'd use E harmonic minor. But now we have the case of uh, F sharp 7 going to B minor. And there I'd use a B harmonic minor scale. So what we're trying to do is get away with not having to think. In a song like Georgia On My Mind, 90% of the song you could get through uh, uh, just using the G major pentatonic. All right. Maybe I should look at the special uh, moments. Uh, we have the um, C sharp minor seven uh, flat five and C minor seven. A C minor seven really you're going really far outside of the key of G when you play that C minor seven. It's uh, an infamous chord change known as the four minor, and it's a really cool one, a really nice one, and it's not uh, uncommon to see. Uh, this is when you take the fourth chord of a key and turn it into a minor chord rather than a major chord. So I'm on C, I'm turning it to C minor. And I'm sure you've heard. Okay, so 
so that's the four minor chord. Perhaps in the future, under the um, uh, major minor key system, I'll discuss that. All right. So uh, now we have one other case. Secondary dominants are one thing. A secondary dominant resolves to one of the chords of a key from five steps away from that chord. So E7, let's look at the key of G, G, A minor, B minor, C, D7, E minor. If I take the A minor chord, go five steps up the scale, one, two, three, four, five, I get an E note. That is where you build a dominant that resolves to that A minor chord. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So these are the secondary dominants. Uh, there's one for each of the chords of the key. But in the cases where, let's say, uh, the companion secondary dominant for the four chord, the C chord in the key of G, if I go five steps up from C, one, two, three, four, five, I get, lo and behold, a G note. I turn that into a seventh chord. That will resolve to that C chord. And you hear very clear resolution. Now, what do you do in that case? Uh, well, in a diatonic world, what you do is play the C major scale. In the pentatonic world, you have a bit more latitude, and you could probably, I'm not going to commit to this yet, but you can probably uh, go ahead with your uh, G major pentatonic. In fact, I'm sure you can. So I'm going to do a G, G7 to C major and see what happens if I stay on my G major pentatonic. obvious it works all right uh, now what is the other case a seventh going to a seventh so let's see what will happen with that I'm going to try to stay with my G major pentatonic in that case so I'm going to I'll put together that uh, progression and I'm just going to use G major pentatonic so that works. So uh, what it seems to be is that the G major pentatonic will work, and the key of G will work against all secondary dominant situations from what I could see here. All right, so that's, uh, that's a good deal. And again, one of the reasons why this, uh, there are two reasons why this works. First of all, when you run into a mode situation, for example, G to G7 to C, that's actually the C Ionian mode, all right? Uh, normally, with a seven note scale, when that G7 comes in, you'd have to put an F note into your scale. Now, the key of G has an F sharp, so that means you're changing your uh, scale to G mixolydian, which is the same as the C major scale. So basically, you're going to the key of C for a moment, all right? Um, seventh to seventh we did. So basically, uh, that's all good. Now, if we look at the, uh, the case of the C sharp minor seven flat five to the C minor seven. All right. Um, I've already shown you that the G major pentatonic works with this. The only problem you're going to have is uh, is uh, when you get to the C minor seven, so that would be the section that goes. Uh, uh, now the problem with using G major pentatonic here is a really bad problem, because in the G major pentatonic we have an E natural note, and this has an E flat note. That is sure to not sound good. Uh, I'll demonstrate the bad soundingness of that. Now there's one note that's the offender. That's okay actually. See that that uh, E 
note has to be changed to E flat. Now, when I uh, was mostly a pentatonic player back in my younger days, um, what I would do, and this is going to go under the heading of artificial pentatonics, which I'm going to broach that subject in this playlist. But what I would do is I'd take a G major pentatonic. <laughs> And wherever an E showed up, I'd play an E flat. It's really pretty, right? So, uh, Tonic. I call it artificial because nature did not give that to us. And in fact, really, the harmonic minor scale and the melodic minor scales are both unnatural. Nature did not give that, them to us. It was only after we tempered the uh, scale uh, where we could combine keys that it was possible to make these unnatural scales. Okay. Now, uh, what's next here is um, the other dominant seventh case, and that is the uh, tritone substitution. Quick review, you should really go back to the major minor key system and all my talk about the dominant seventh chord and get that kind of really worked into your mind. But basically what a tritone substitution does is it replaces one of those six secondary dominants that resolve to a chord in the key. The uh, good news about um, uh, tritone substitutions is that they resolve always a half step down. The secondary dominant resolves five steps away from its target, right? It's five steps away, but the tritone substitution is one half step. So in other words, if I want to resolve to a G major chord, I just go up a half step to an A flat seven. So a two, five, one, A minor, D seven, G would now become A minor, A flat seven, G. Okay. Now the question is, can I stay with my G major pentatonic on this? No, uh, it will sound awful. I'm just going to play the A flat seven so you could hear what G major pentatonic sounds like. I don't think so. In fact, it's the exact diametrical opposite of what you should play, which is very simply you play whenever you discover a tritone substitution, you play the major pentatonic of the root of that chord. So in other words, to put that into English, I have an A flat seven, I do an A flat major seven, uh, uh, an A flat major, uh, an A flat major pentatonic. Now listen to it. So then what do you do in the case of uh, that two five, A minor seven, A flat seven, G major, all right? I'll lay that down. So, all right, against that A flat, I moved my G major pentatonic up a half step. Uh. That's a, that's a really nice sound. Now that can work all the six chords of a key. If you take any one of those chords, go up a half step, that is the tritone substitution that resolves to that chord. So an E minor, F7 resolves to E minor. All right. Uh, this kind of resolution, when you turn that seventh into a ninth chord, it's a really pretty sound. Fiona Apple used this a whole bunch in her career. All right, so in any case, that F9 or F7, extended F7, resolves to E minor. So E minor, I play my G major pentatonic, that'll work, right? We've already covered that. Now, all the six chords and the secondary dominance that go to those six chords, G major pentatonic will work through it. Um, in the case of 
F9 or F7 extended going to E minor, I'll lay down that progression. And what is the answer to the question? What scale you play against this F9, F7, F major pentatonic? That simple, okay? And let's see what that sounds like. I guarantee you it'll sound nice. All right, here we go. Here's the F9 again. All right, now, against any of the other chords, G and E minor, G major pentatonic. So here comes the G major pentatonic. You'll find actually that these uh, against the tritone substitutions, you get a very pleasing sound when you play the major pentatonic against it. All right, so uh, now we have another case, uh, the five chord. Go up a half step. All right, so what I'm doing is E flat nine, D nine, which is part of the key of G, and G, which is part of the key of G. Now, the E flat is not, it's a tritone substitution. What will I play? E flat major pentatonic. So I'm going to lay that down. All right, let's do this. And I switch back to the G major pentatonic as soon as it resolves down to that D9. Right, again. All right, now, uh, if you're going to be picky, I didn't. I added some notes to the pentatonic. I added some blue notes and chromatic notes, but that's just a habit of mine. All right, now uh, next case would be we have a C major chord in the key of G, the four chord. I'm going to resolve down. Um, all right, so here we go. I'm going to lay down that progression: G major seven, D flat nine. C major 7. So what I've got is G major 7, D flat 9, C major 7, and uh, D11 or D9 suspended. No, major nine. Wait for the motorcycle to pass. All right, so G major seven, uh, G major pentatonic, D flat. also important well as soon as a dominant seventh that comes outside of the key when it when it arrives inside of your key you really especially when you're dealing with diatonic scales and modes you have to change your scale there's no choice in the case of the secondary dominance and major pentatonic g major pentatonic notice we didn't have to change our scale but with these tritone substitutions it'll sound like ass if you don't change it you must change so you have to develop the eye for seeing uh uh, uh, tritone substitution when it pops up. Okay. 
Uh, one way to tell, and I've mentioned this in an earlier video, if you take all six chords of a key, turn them into seventh chords, eliminate the four, so now you have all of those are secondary dominants for the key of G, all right? Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm missing one here. There should be six, but I don't want to think too hard right now. So, uh, all right. Um, let's put it this way. Any other dominant seventh chord aside from those. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, now I, I know what I did wrong. In this case, we have to, uh, the six chords of a key, we have to include the seventh step, which is the half diminished. Now. We eliminate the fourth chord, but turn everything else into a dominant seven. So I got G7, A7, B7, D7, E7, F sharp seven. All of those are the second, the secondary dominance that will resolve to the chords of the key of G. So if you know that, any dominant seventh chord that is not one of those six is a tritone substitution. All right. Try to get this in your head and understand it, because when you do, you're going to have tremendous flexibility using just simple pentatonic scales. All right, so now let's go to the next case. Um, uh, uh, the B minor chord of the key of G, resolving from a half step up the C7, or in this case, C9. All right, so I get... Now you might think to yourself, well, C9 is close to the key of G. It's close, but I have a B natural in my pentatonic scale, and that will sound assy against the C9. Uh, uh, here it is. It doesn't work. All right, so that's why we must switch to the, when the C9 comes in, C major pentatonic. So I'm going to lay down a progression that uses that, and all I'm going to do real simple is just G major 7 to C9 back and forth. So G major 7, C9. G major pentatonic, C major pentatonic. Major pentatonic. C major pentatonic. All right. So there's that. Now the next case is resolving to the two chord B flat, dominant seventh, or in this case nine, resolving to A minor. So. And my progression will be G major seven. B flat nine, the dominant chord, the tritone substitution that relaxes to A minor. And then finally a D11. And here's our progression, G major seven. B flat nine, A minor seven, D11. So for all the chords except that B flat nine, I'll use G major pentatonic. So, here we go, G major pentatonic. B flat. relaxing down to the one chord. So I'm just going to do A minor 7, A flat 9, G major 7. 